Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sounds from the Ziggurat podcast, your niche look into the world of Brighton-based bands and artists from the noughties and more. I have started writing this episode about 17 times, not quite sure of the tone I should take or whether I should even talk about the current state of the world. Ideally, I wanted to record another episode solely focusing on some classic and newer Brighton-based music, but things have become so dire that I think not addressing it at all would be a missed opportunity for my own selfish well-being. I'm actually in self-isolation right now, something I hoped I wouldn't have to do, but following the most recent guidelines from the government, it does seem like it's the best plan of action for someone like myself and the asthma that's been with me since I was very young. I am lucky though, I can quite easily indulge myself in various projects, and I also might have the opportunity to do some work from home as well. And it's not as if the army is on our streets just yet, guns to our heads telling us to remain indoors. We can still go outside for exercise, just be careful. Adhere to social distancing, take the advice we've been given regarding cleanliness and good hygiene practice, and stop non-essential shopping. Bear in mind some of this script might be slightly outdated by the time the podcast goes out. The situation keeps changing by the day, and it's a bit hard to keep up with, so instead of rewriting it for the 88th time, I'm just going to roll with it. The crisis has reiterated how helpful technology and even social media can be in these times too. And I'm not just talking about the sharing of amusing memes, although that has been about 80% of my past few days. Thanks, Deck. Sorry, Dave. Petra and I gatecrashed an online dance social last week. 50 to 60 people in their homes, all with webcams set up and following their teacher. It was a real moment of people coming together virtually, and for that 45 minutes, all anxiety and stress was put to one side for a little fun. I'll be pretty much communicating from my webcam at the flat for the next couple of weeks, so feel free to hit me up for a chat. I also might be conducting a couple of interviews for the podcast this way too, as you'll hear about at the end of the show. Also, add me on Switch for some Mario Kart or Smash Tennis multiplayer action to help take our minds off things for a little while. My friend code is SW-8128-1289-8889. And that number again is SW-8128-1289-8889. Be aware that if we are playing Smash Tennis, I won't be impressed if you choose to exit the game early to go eat homemade salsa after I've bravely fought my way into first place from behind. It's almost become cliché to say, but it's as relevant now as it was in the beginning. Be safe, wash your hands and look out for each other. Let's have a track, shall we? It's a newer one in the grand scheme of the podcast and comes from Bad Mother Folker. I got to meet Steve at an overhead wires night at the Quadrant, put on by the legend Richard Ward a couple of years back. Steve's anti-folk anthems are catchy and poignant, and he had us all in hysterics with his humorous songs about romance and politics. Looking at his bandcamp, badmotherfolker.bandcamp.com, cats also feature prominently. Steve's also a bit of a traveller, so check out his Instagram, at Steve underscore versus the world, for an amazing selection of places he has been, and that none of us will ever be allowed to travel to again. Remain indoors. This is the track that really caught my attention. Primarily because my friend Faye was in hysterics when he played it, and the crowd were in a nice positive mood when he finished his set. Unfortunately for them, I was up to play next. This is Bad Mother Folker with the Daily Mail. It seems like just surviving's getting harder every day. Sometimes we find we need a sign to show us the right way. Our island's like a ship at sea that's just about to sink. Oh, thank God we have a publication to tell us what to think. It shows us good from evil and it shows us black from white It helps us to see right from left and shows us wrong from right Any time that you feel lost there's a plan that will not fail You can find all of your answers in the Daily Mail Mail. It's full of information you just can't live without It tells you all the new things you should be panicking about All teenagers are hooded yobs Hanging round in drunken mobs And every single immigrant came here to steal your job They came to steal your wallet And your iPhone and your hat Jeremy Corbyn's crazy and he wants to eat your cat The only way that you'll be safe is to lock him up in jail I know that it's true because I read it In the Daily Mail in the Daily Mail, in the Daily Mail, in the Daily Mail, 
they've got stacks of facts on this and that. The reporting's off the scale in the Daily Mail. In the Daily Mail. In the Daily Mail. So if you decide you're not that keen to think your thoughts autonomously, it's the only paper that you'll need to ever take the time to read. It's the Daily Mail. That's the Daily Mail. It's the Daily Mail. So lock up all your doors and find a safe place to hide. You'll probably catch a bowler if you take a step outside. But you're still not safe and you should be filled with dread. There's a benefit claiming paedophile spider hiding under your bed. Every single page is filled with fascinating stories. Reasons to be fearful and to re-elect the Tories. Poorly written articles that leave out the details. But who cares about the truth when instead you could be reading the Daily Mail. In the Daily Mail, in the Daily Mail, they've got sport and news and right-wing views that won't ever get stale in the Daily Mail, in the Daily Mail. So if you don't care much for the poor or any other country, that's not yours. If you think misogyny sounds fun, but you're too middle class to buy the sun. And if you think all feminists are mad and casual racism's not that bad, don't get sad and don't get blue, because there's a newspaper that's just for you. It's the Daily Mail. It's the Daily Mail. It's the Daily Mail. When we were coming to the end of our school days, there was a lot of uncertainty about what to do next. I did not go to the best of schools, let's put it that way. The main reason I went is because my friends were going there, and I think the only reason they went is because their siblings were already in attendance. On reflection, it did have a few well-meaning teachers, but overall, it was always failing for various reasons. And towards the end, a lot of us jumped into our next adventure with closed eyes, because we didn't really know what opportunities were available to us at the time. I don't get sucked into all this boomer versus millennial versus gen what the fuck ever nonsense, but one thing I do envy about today's youth is their access to the internet. Seeing what's available to you can be a blessing and a curse, but I guess seeing the wider picture would have been invaluable at the time, perhaps giving us a little more direction. I ended up going to Lewis College, about four or five of our friendship group did, and pretty much 100% of us had left within the first month. I wouldn't put words in everyone else's mouths, but for me personally, it was far removed from anything I actually wanted to do. I chose business, computing and media studies, and the first few lessons were incredibly unengaging. Also spending a fiver on travel every day was quite hard on my fragile wallet. Although to be honest, that was most likely funded by the bank of the parents, who were excellently supportive through this time, and are at all other times to be fair, so uh, thanks. Anyway, why am I telling you this? Well, mainly to fill time, but also to strenuously lead into the next track. I lasted around two weeks at Lewis before my cousin Kelly rescued me and got me onto a music course taking place at Brighton College. Thanks for that. For you history buffs, this is of course the course where I met Inferior Ad, for better or worse. In the second year, we had a new group of students join us, and there was one guy who stood out as one of the most incredible and versatile bassists I had ever seen. Combine that with amazing metal vocals and the nicest personality, and you have Ant. You may remember on a previous episode of the podcast, I featured Here There Be Monsters, for which he was the vocalist. His heavy rock band Naked 8 were active somewhere between 2002 or 3 to 2005 or 6. Ant notes that the biggest highlight of the band's career was supporting Ruben at the Concord 2 alongside Million Dead. How cool is that? Naked 8 performed their last show at the Pav Tav after the band naturally ran its course and the members went on to do various different projects. Luckily for Ant, he resisted what must have been a very tempting request to join Inferion after myself and the guys sat him down in the Hobgoblin when the position became available. He dodged a bullet there. I don't think he would have achieved half as much as he did in the following years if he had joined us. We can look forward to more projects and music Ant's been involved with on future episodes of the podcast, but for now, this is Naked 8 with Judas.
last track on today's podcast comes from Uncle the Ill Figure, and not Uncle the Third Figure. Sorry about that, Cole. This was sent to me via one of my Facebook shoutouts, where I recently asked musicians and bands to submit music I could feature in the podcast. This piece of music was recorded on two mics and an interface in a factory in Fishersgate. And since I received the initial message from Cole, there's also been another release, which you can find on their Bandcamp page, uncletheillfigure.bandcamp.com. I look forward to seeing it performed live in the future, or perhaps on YouTube if that takes over and we are never allowed out in public again. The Bandcamp description is DIY bedroom sad synth pop, which sounds right up my street. This is the title track from the EP Spit.
So that's it for this episode of Sounds from the Ziggurat podcast. I do apologise that the last couple of shows have been shorter and a little more inconsistent. I've been wanting to keep up with my writing, but a lot has been going on, and I've not been able to make as much time for it as I'd hoped. Some good news though, A, I've completed the first part of my chat with Gaz Marlow, which we were able to conduct a couple of weeks before the coronavirus really started to impact our way of life. We covered a whole host of topics about Gaz, and there's still a lot more to come in the future. It may mean we have to complete the interview via Skype and a few beers instead though. B, I've received a thin package in the post this week of music provided to me by Simon Parker. Somehow he managed to sneak some CDs out of France before it went into total lockdown. Don't worry, I did anti-back the package after picking it up from my doorstep. These CDs feature some cable club bands, Villarreal goodness, and even the unreleased second album from the Lightning Department. All very exciting stuff, and I'm massively grateful to Simon for taking the time to ship them to me. I should also endeavour to conduct an interview with him via the medium of Skype to talk about those amazing 10 years of Cable Club and hopefully a whole lot more. I'll continue to be shacked up at the Ziggurat for the time being, cracking on with music, podcasts and a whole spreadsheet's worth of DIY. Give me a shout on one of the many social media platforms if you want to hang out and have a virtual drink, alcoholic or otherwise. Just look out for yourselves and others and I'll be back on your stereo soon. Thanks for listening. received a thin package in a post this week of music provided to me by Simon Parker. Somehow he managed to sneak some CDs out of France before it went into total lockdown. Don't worry, I did anti-back the package after picking it up from my doorstep. But Pet's here now, so that's okay.